Reo Māori is my first language, uh, so I'll probably go in and out of Māori and English uh, throughout the, the duration of the series. Uh, thought, before we talk about the actual database itself, um, that it's only correct that we talk about radio, uh, the Indian radio network, uh, because my kore ko ngā reo ngā Māori, ka kore te nei kaupapa. If it wasn't the Māori radio, then that's database wouldn't exist. So we're just going to touch on the establishment of Iwi Radio. Now this is after uh, all of the legends and pioneers of Māori broadcasting such as Wede Mupaka, He Nare Teua, Bill Kerekere um, and uh, obviously uh, Dr Hare Williams. So the advent of Māori Radio was the result of a claim to the Waitangi Tribunal in 1986 uh, concerning the allocation of radio frequencies to promote te reo Māori. Radio frequencies, when we talk about radio frequencies, that's like your favourite radio stations, 99.6 and all of that sort of stuff. So radio frequencies, um, there was a call that frequencies should be set aside right. to promote the Māori language. Daupokoteika in Wellington had its first broadcast on 11.61am on the 4th of May 1987. Piripi Walker, the founder of Daupoko, was involved with the original <coughs> Treaty of Waitangi claim. And Piripi Walker, up until recently, um, was on the board of Māori Television. Um, and you can see Piripi Walker in this photo down the bottom here, uh, next to a New Zealand radio training school tutor, uh, Tamate Huki. Māori Radio was born. There are 21 Māori Radio stations throughout Aotearoa, throughout the Motu, from Kaitaia in the north right down to Christchurch in the south. Iwi stations are funded by Te Māngai Pāho, Māori Broadcasting Funding Agency. So Te Māngai Pāho, they fund Māori Television, Te Karere, uh, and all of those types of programs. Te Māngai Pāho, also fund the 21 iwi radio stations. Stations are required to broadcast 10 and a half hours of te reo content each and every single day. Now of that 10 and a half hours of content, that can be made up of the spoken word, te reo Māori, e kōrero te ana, ki runga i te reo irirangi, but also waiata Māori. Te whakaruru hau o ngā reo irirangi Māori or the iwi radio network is a group set up uh, to enable iwi radio stations to collaborate. So these are logos from the various uh, 21 iwi radio stations right across uh, the motu. <coughs> and so I had my beginnings in, in broadcasting in this one here, uh, MFM or Maniapoto <coughs> FM, which broadcast out of my hometown, Te uh, in the King Country. So that's just a very brief, condensed, Reader's Digest version of Ngā Reo Irirangi Māori who are there uh, to promote Te Reo Māori, the Māori language, um, and also promote um, tribal stories. And it was great to hear um, our previous keynote speaker uh, talk about Te Kōti, Te Kōti Arikirangi Te Tūruki, um, and also the various whare um, that uh, Te Kōti established um, and actually today is a very significant day uh, because uh, Te Hahi Ringatu, uh, who Te Koti was the founder of, celebrated 160 years since it was established. 
and Tūraga FM in Gisborne are at this moment doing a live broadcast of that significant event which is taking part, uh, taking place in Te Tairawhiti. So these are, that's what's important about these radio stations. Uh, it's an opportunity for tribes to tell their story um, to the motu, to Aotearoa, uh, and to the world. The iwi radio contract, um, which I'm going to hand over to my senior colleague Kim to talk about, this is where our organisation <coughs> Fitireia uh, and the New Zealand Radio Training School became involved with um, iwi radio. Well, um, I started my broadcasting career in 1970 in Dunedin, straight up, virtually out of high school. And uh, I've worked in radio for 40 odd years now, and in the early days, when I say early days, the last 10 years or so, we've just, we've, I've certainly become personally aware of iwi radio due to um, training. So we have a contract uh, which we provide services. We teach unit standards to, um, to our uh, iwi brothers and sisters, and also uh, recently we've now got into the diploma situation where we're teaching diplomas. So what happened was I was asked to sort of go around and, and have a little look-see, and this was about 10 years ago, to see what we could um, assist with Iwi Radio. And obviously we had to uh, deliver unit standards, but what we found was when we were there talking to um, the staff, I'd go back three months later to finish off the unit standards, and unfortunately half of the staff had gone. So there was, there was, there was not a lot of consistency in, in keeping staff in Iwi Radio. It was very transitional. So um, we embarked on sort of bringing students to Auckland. Um, this is more recently, and we're finding that's a great way of, um, of bringing them to Auckland about three or four weekends a year. Um, and we give them training in the studios and what have you, but Ra and I still go out and visit um, the Iwi stations. Uh, last year, we visited 21 stations, and it was great to actually go out and see how they operate and see where they operate and with what gear they have. Um, a lot of the uh, problems with a network like this is not all of the stations are on the same <coughs> systems. It would be so good if we had them all on the one system, we could make things a lot easier for all of us. But everyone has their own different system and we have to deal with that. So iwi radio for me um, was hidden for quite a few years. I worked in the commercial area, but um, getting to know the stations and getting to know what they do, they are the last local radio stations in this country. Everything basically comes out of networks now. Networks out of Auckland, out of Wellington, Christchurch. Iwi Radio is really the last local station and we, we really want them to make sure that they are local and relevant to their communities. So we assist in that. Um, the language is another situation. The language is actually taught by the local Iwi, but we assist in showing them how to put good radio together. And it's an interesting task. Ra also um, ear checks all of the stations on a regular basis. So we have that regular system, regular contact. And um, you can explain a little bit more about that. Before I talk about ear checking, some of you may be wondering why we have 21 hmm. iwi radio stations and not <coughs> just one. Uh, that's a simple answer. And that is because we all have different stories. The reo is different. The dialect is different. My friends who live 10 minutes down the road might have a different version of the story to me. So that's why um, it's important that we have the 21 iwi radio station, stations. Yes, as part of our organisation, our contract with Te Māngai Pāho, um, we are asked to critique, not critique the language, because that's not for us to do. That's for the individual tribes to do. But we do critique the delivery of the language, um, and also just um, the basic, the fundamentals of radio to make sure that we're ticking all the boxes. Uh, so these are just some of uh, the initiatives that we've run over the last um, wee while. What we found when we uh, were visiting these 21 iwi radio stations, and I tell you what, there, there are some stations out there who are doing wonderful work with absolutely nothing. Um, and they're doing an incredible job. What we found is that the stations don't have a central database for all of their waiata. I'm sure those of you who really enjoy Macy Rika, <laughs> Rob Ruha and all that sort of stuff, it's quite difficult to get your hands um, or purchase those waiata Māori. Even more difficult to find um, traditional Māori waiata because it's just not out there. You'll have all the recent stuff on your iTunes and Spotify, but a lot of the older stuff is a lot more difficult to find. And so um, 
the idea came about about establishing uh, a database. A wire to database. Aninga whainga. So the goal was to establish an iwi wire to database. This is a New Zealand first as well as a world first, which is quite a surprise. There had been several attempts over the years. Quite a substantial amount of funding went into it, but for whatever reason, nothing came of it. So we saw an opportunity to help iwi radio, but also help um, artists to promote their waiata um, and promote themselves as artists. The 21 iwi uh, stations use differing playout systems, and this follows on to what Kim was saying. Um, a station up north, they might use a different playout system to a station in Christchurch. So that becomes a logistical nightmare trying to get copies of those songs. Um, some songs sound beautiful on the radio. Other songs, not so much. Not so, good. so throughout 2016, and this is what Kim was referring to, um, he and I embarked on a sort of like a, a tour mm. around uh, to all of our iwi stations. Um, and this is where, how do I put this? Some stations, and rightfully so, some stations are very protective of their waiata. Why? Because a lot of these traditional waiata hold the wisdom and the stories of the tribe. So there were some, not many, but there were some stations who said, we're not going to give you our waiata at this point. Kei te pai. That was fine. There were other stations that said to us, we're going to give you our waiata, but here are the conditions. And that's rightfully so as well. And we had no issues with that. And so we went around and we quite possibly put together one of the most comprehensive backups of the 21 iwi radio stations where we went in and we copied their database in its entirety, not just waiata. So we came, uh, came away with archival um, audio of kaumatua speaking, uh, whaikōrero on the marae and so on, which we have kept for safekeeping and we do not share. And then in 2015, Tautoko FM and Mangamuka burnt to the ground. Along with it, all of their wire to database, all of their archives, everything. everything they yeah. just lost everything. And actually, Kim, you might want to talk yeah, about so that. Yes, I went up, uh, went up to have a little look and um, it was pretty devastating. They'd set themselves up across the road in a service station. It was re looked really good. It was, it was actually a, a fantastic job of setting them up so quickly. But um, no music, none, none at all, no wire whatsoever. So um, I did a bit of <coughs> horse trading and took my, my uh, four terabytes of, of music I've collected over the years. And we sort of swapped a few here and I managed to um, give them a, a, a pretty good base to start from. But from that moment, we thought, there's no, what, there's no major way out of database. So Ra and I then started really sort of honing down and getting a good copy of every song we possibly could. That was a good way out of song. Um, and hence the beginning of the database. But we did have to go around and do a bit of horse trading. I must admit, I sort of had my hard drive and, and we've managed to convince, I think we've got pretty much 90, 90 99% now. There's one or two that um, are still holding back a little bit. But um, so we still have, um, we still have a fantastic database built from most of the stations right now. Mm. What, was, what was quite interesting is that when we got these audio files from the radio stations, they came to us by numbers. So we didn't know the artist. We didn't know the name of the song. Just a, just a number. Just a number. <laughs> um, so we had to do quite a, quite a bit of research because in order for the database to work, we needed the very basics of the metadata, at least who sang it, and the name of the, the waiata. Yeah. Um, so that was quite a tedious, drawn out, time consuming process. But hey, <laughs> in terms of that, you know, this is where the da database actually proved um, that it was um, definitely beneficial, especially in these um, types of situations. All right, so the waiata database has, the, has been named Te Rongokura. Uh, why? I hear you ask. Um, it's kind of a play on words. If you look at a Māori world view, and we look at the five senses, rongo describes four of the five senses. So smell, taste, to hear, obviously, touch 
in Māori is rongo. So why we chose the word rongo is because it perfectly describes the power of music and the power of the kōrero and the messages and the words and the stories that's in that music, in particular focusing on Māori music. So that's why we used the term rongo. Kura, in this context, is something to be treasured, something to be cherished, which is why a lot of our iwi stations are protective of their waiata databases. And like I said before, that makes complete sense. <laughs> All right, the database now stands at 3,500 tracks. 3,500 tracks that we've been able to add the metadata to. We have, more. Yeah, yeah. we have terabytes upon terabytes of, of waiata, but we don't know who sings it or the name of the song. Also, we've got quite a large backup of kapahaka. Kapahaka is an entirely different beast. Uh, because when you start talking about kapahaka, yeah, you know, intellectual property rights and all that sort of stuff. Um, so now we have a backup of kapahaka, but that's not shared on any platform whatsoever. It's just a little bit too hard at the moment. Um, but that's really something that te mangai uh, to have to think about. All right, just very quickly, I know we're running out of time, the online web okay, interface. We've, this is where Kim comes in. Basically, we wanted to have this uh, database available on the internet for our radio station so they can look at new songs, um, have a listen to them, and also at the same time download <coughs> them for their playlist. So I've just worked together a little, if I can get my mouse to work, a little, let's have a look here. Okay, get rid of that one. So what it is, is just a little front, um, for the internet, little front end, and you can search for artists. Where am I? Where am I? Search for artists. Okay, some artists pop up if you wanted to have a look. And it gives you the ability to listen. You can just have a little listen. So you can go on to any song that's on the database, listen to it, see if you like it. Um, then you've got a choice of downloading it as an mp3 or a WAV, depending on the format of your radio station. So if I want to download it, basically I just do that and it downloads directly to the radio station. So we want this to be available to all the stations. Um, and it's purely um, a membership thing. You have to have a login or log on to actually get it. But later on, we'd actually like to extend the database and make it available for the public to have access to it. So in a nutshell, that's kind of what it is. You can skip through and have a listen. And it's, so that's a quick mock-up of what we're uh, trying to do on the internet for our stations. So what's happening now is that, uh, thank you. So <laughs> Te Mangai Paho is now talking to Ngā Taonga Sound and Vision um, because it, we think it's important that all of this archive audio and quite precious content to iwi is stored in a neutral, yeah. environment, shall we say, um, and so it's been decided that Ngā Taonga Sound and Vision would be a great way, uh, a great place um, to put that. Um, koina, I think that is us. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for your attention. Yes, very nice. Thank you. ハイハマレオイリダミマオリテファカアラテファカオロイテレオミオナチカアホコロトカマタヒナタイハマアイマヒアナハコエヘケナタウエマヒアナヤハケネイテタケカイテヘケハレトネテロマモヨキテコレロ
Nō reira me titiro tātou ki aua kaupapa katoa i te mea ki tāku nei titiro ko ahua pō harāke te reo Māori i tēnei wā pēra ki te wā i mua noa ki te tīmatanga o e nei kaupapa. Ko tētahi ko tētahi kaufau e kaufau hiana e mātou te New Zealand Radio Training School me tahu reo ki te reo Pākehā ki a mārama i te katoa One thing that we have been promoting is the power of bilingualism. Um, because evidence shows that when our reo idirangi Māori or our Māori radio go into f to total immersion, that's when listenership drops away. Um, largely because the vast majority of our people uh, and Aotearoa as a whole, don't quite have te reo at this point in time. Uh, so what we are suggesting is that if we follow more of a bilingual format, then that will include everybody. Yeah. Those who have the reo, those who have a little bit of te reo, but also those who have no reo whatsoever. Um, The ultimate game is for us, the ultimate goal, I should say, is for us to be total immersion, to go full te reo Māori. But unfortunately, the listenership doesn't reflect that. No. There isn't a need for that at this point in time. So what we are suggesting is that we pull things back, we follow our bilingual format, and we get our listenership and our people up to a certain point, and we follow their progress and proficiency. So as they get more and more fluent, we start to add more and more te reo Māori. Because at the moment, in my view, this is my own personal view, is that we're providing a product that has no market at this point in time. Yeah. Not a lot of listeners. That's what, no. it, that's what it is. It's all about the listeners. And if, the, if you're not listening, you're not getting a message across. And that's the most un unfortunate thing. Um, it's mm. almost cart before the horse mm. kind of stuff. Um, see, I, me personally, I don't agree with the ten and a half hours of Te Reo Māori content because it just doesn't make sense, not from a radio point no. of view. From a radio point of view, Te Reo Māori is important, absolutely. But we're in the business of radio. The most important thing in radio is listenership. You could have the most fluent, most eloquent, beautiful speaker on the radio, but if no one's listening, how te take? So I haven't really answered your question, Ehoa. I kind of, in a roundabout way, I've thrown other questions out there. Um, but this is, yeah, yeah. But this is really um, something that Iwi Radio has been struggling with for some time now. Yeah. Yeah. Go. Uh, with the community and the value of what Rara and Kevin have done here in terms of innovation and research. You don't actually have to have a white cup to actually see what the impact this has on our community and the value of it. And sometimes we just need to reflect on what our people are doing sometimes that I understand the value. And it's like I, I, whenever I get a chance to promote the work that these guys are doing, I, I do. And I think that, that we, across our sector, need to think about what our people are doing because they're doing some amazing things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Agree with that, um, Shock. It's a, it's a really great example of the applied and active research that we're doing in the sector. I'm not on my Peter. You um, have to buy the spectrum space and the radio space, and who owns who owns the money? Mm. The buyer. <laughs> <laughs> Iwi Radio has a spectrum allocated to it by the government. To, uh, to e radio. So, so for example, there's a high powered frequency in Auckland at yes. the moment, which currently isn't occupied, right. um, but is dedicated to promoting Te Reo Māori. Yeah. Why that's not being utilised at the moment? Ewa, not sure. But it's there. Yeah. In Auckland, one of the most saturated um, markets in, markets the, in, in the world, the world yeah. Yeah. there is one specifically dedicated to promote the Māori language. Yeah. Who owns the rangi? 
Kaj ako je tena, jo? Kaj to pa taj. So how it works is uh, Mark Paho sets aside funding for tw the 21 EU radio stations. So their goal is and aim is to promote the language. How they do that is entirely up to them. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yes, there are similar initiatives happening throughout the, the network. I know um, the Department of uh, Etu Fano. Mm -hmm. Uh, ran a, a singing competition, which is kind of like uh, along the same lines. Mm. Not so much to promote the language, um, although a lot of uh, those who submitted waiata, um, they were in te reo, but it's mainly to promote Fano in their particular mm. particular kaupapa. But yes, the um, iwi stations can do that. What we've also done is, um, in Christchurch, we did a, uh, basically a, a bit of a study, and we looked at getting, well, basically iwi radio struggles from getting new talent. And so we went and went to a school in, in uh, Christchurch and it's young Maori and we do broadcasting courses, a short course for a week, get them interested into it. And we're thinking of expanding that throughout the country, different areas, to try and promote um, talent for iwi radio. <coughs> the language is very important, of course, but also we do, do teach them the radio skills as well. Yeah, the turnover of talent in iwi, iwi radio is, is, is quite Massive. fast. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, um, when Māori Television was established, they kind of came through and just took all of the all of the, all bright, of the rising all stars the in every radio. Clean them out. <laughs> There's no one from Māori Television here, is there? <laughs> Sorry, Keith. Um, but yeah, the turnover, and obviously those who have te reo, um, they, they kind of go into different areas, like, like teaching and so on, mm. and, and into to other jobs. So it's, it's quite difficult to, to hold talent who have te reo um, in every radio. Yes. Oh. Sorry. 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 Uh, Just grab that laptop for me and I'll undo that. Just the thing on the side. 